going on falcon fan this your boy Ricundo come back at you with another video so today we're going to talk about what should we expect and how important the rookie class is for us this year for us to be successful right so guys if you have not already go ahead and please subscribe to the channel please hit that notification bell so you know when i drop another video go ahead and hit that like button so i know you guys that hear what i talk about then please share my video throughout the YouTube universe so more people can come in and hear me talk about these Atlanta Falcons. So like I said, how important are the rookies for us this year? Um, I think that question um, is big. And I think it, it's, it's a valid question for these Atlanta Falcons, right? Um, when I look at this roster and I look at the build of this rock roster and I look at last year draft class and i look at this year draft class and those two draft class put together is the reason why i feel good about the um expectations for the falcon this year however that's a lot to put on a bunch of rookies right um it could be the reason why they got us ranked so low looking at our roster because we're going to be dependent on a lot of rookies um, i like that because these guys can grow together we got a young team um, you can build a team because when you got a lot of rookies like that and they're coming in their first years, um, the salary cap is going to be more manageable. However, if all you guys hit, um, you want all you guys to hit, but if they do all hit, now you got to decide who you're going to pay and who you're not going to be able to pay. But that's down the road. But if we can get these guys to play well, um, like I said, last year rookie class and this year rookie class, we can get these guys to play well. Um, this this team can be pretty good and they can be young and they can be pretty good for for a while that's what i'm looking at at this rookie class but um the expectation with this rookie class i think is um for the coaching staff and especially for us as fans um it's pretty high i mean we start with the number eight or our pick drake london and just think about how much pressure is going to be on him he's going to be the number one receiver coming in um he does not have a veteran like Julio had in Roddy White. He does not have a veteran like Kevin really had in Julio to show him the ropes. Break Drake London is going to come in and he's going to have to be that dog. Can he be Chase Young from last year? Can he be Jefferson from the Minnesota Vikings a couple of years ago? Can he come in and be those guys um, and, and be the number one alpha dog on the receiving room? Remember, our receiving room was revamped. It's a lot of new faces there, but Drake London is going to be that number one guy. He was picked number eight overall, so the expectation for Drake London is going to be high. Um, it's no look way around it. When you, especially when you picked in the first round, you expected to play like a first rounder. So that's no surprise that he's going to be that guy. It's just a little different because he does not have that veteran dog to show him the ropes. Um, he's going to have to. You know, lean on his coaching staff, lean on Lumberdays the kids, the mirror bird, those guys that been in the lead a while to show him some things. But Drake London has to come in and he gonna have to take that number one spot. And that's what we want to see from Drake London. A guy like Armor Epicati, this guy was drafted second round. Um, some people had a first round grade on him. Um, I think he needs to come in. He needs to play well. He he may get the starting job over um, Oak and Deji um, si on the other side of Lorenzo Carter, but he might not. But either way, Arm um, Evicati is going to get a lot of playing time. We all know that we only had 18 sacks last year. So Armor um, Evicati is definitely going to have to show, show some shine this year. Look, just look at it like this. When our pass rush was so bad last year, probably could be – noted as the best worst pass rush in NFL history considering we had 18 sacks and that was the first season we played 17 games so um so we can't go nowhere but up from from that standpoint but Armour Ever Katie and D'Angelo Malone is going to be expected to to provide some pressure to the quarterback this year and yes they're rookies but um they gonna have to learn on the fly. We know Dean Pease don't like to play rookies that much. They don't know the game plan. But these guys need to get spin up quick because they're going to be expected for those guys to be able to shine. Desmond Ritter is maybe in a little different situation 
and then these other guys I just mentioned. However, he is going into a quarterback competition, so he could end up being the number one guy to start week one. And if he do, all the pressure is going to be on him because he beat out the, the savvy vet and Marcus Mariota. He got the rings. He's going to have to show that he can actually keep the rings, right? Worst thing you could do to a rookie quarterback is start him and then have to pull him because he's not playing well. So if he if he somehow go out and win that quarterback competition, hopefully that means he's ready. He can keep it. Um, but I really believe that Marcus Mariota is going to be that number one guy, which is going to give Des Murder time to actually learn the game better, look at the speed of the game, and kind of get acclimated to the NFL before he had to get in there. But we know Marcus Mariota injury history he could go down anytime this murder still has to be ready the guy that i'm really looking at to actually have an impact is tyler argier this guy um this is the reason why they got rid of mike davis tyler argier is going to come in um the way he ran the ball last year in college was was um awesome so we expect him to come in he could be the number one back we know Cardell patterson gonna have a lot to say about that um, i think Cardell patterson is gonna be in some receiver um roles as well because don't forget he he was he was drafted as a receiver so moving him over to running back was something they did you know his last years in, in chicago and something they did here with atlanta what he actually had one of his best career seasons in his career last year so um but i think tyler Algier is going to come in he got to be able to play on third down that means pan protect and catch the ball out the backfield but i think tyler Algier is going to have a big impact and we expect him to have a big impact our terminator troy anderson this guy has all this all the athletic ability he got all the size um I think he's going to be in the same boat with a Desmond Ritter. He can get to learn behind some veterans like a Michael Walker or Rashawn Evans. So he won't have, he might not have to get out there and start right away. But if they decide to make it a competition, he could. I think he already has the, the ability to um, cover tight ends and backs out of the backfield because of his speed and his size. So um, I think he's going to get a lot of playing time. But we just have to see about Troy Anderson. But I still think he's going to make an impact this this year. And then our last two guys that we got on the list, our Georgia Bulldogs, they just need to come in. They were drafting later rounds, but they're going to be big on special teams. And especially for Justin Schaefer, hope he can push somebody like a um, Jalen Mayfield to be better going from year one to year two. So, guys, just looking at this rookie class, like I said, we know it's rookies. But for us as Atlanta Falcons, we're going to have to expect a lot from these rookies. Um, hopefully, it won't be too much to put on their plate. Hopefully, it's something that they can handle. Um, hopefully, this this offseason they just had going through OTAs and minicamp, um, they, got a, they got a little bit um, less views going to training camp. Um, I know Troy Anderson was saying it like, he had a fire hose on trying to learn all that knowledge and all that the playbooks and things like that. That's suspected in year one. We all know this, right? That's why we always talk about that jump from year one to year two. But for this Falcons team, in my opinion, to be successful, these rookies have to play well, right? Especially our number eight overall pick, Drake London. Especially our second round pick and Armour Evan Katie. Right. And hopefully Tyler Algier can 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 show some of the things he did when he was at BYU this past season. Right. So that's my expectation for the rookie class. I would love to hear your expectations. And do you think if these guys don't play well, can the Falcons be successful this year? In my opinion, if they don't play well, um, we could be that four to three win team that everybody's talking about. It's a lot of pressure to put on, but that's why I'm excited because for one thing, first time in a long time, it's a lot of unknown things that we don't know about this team. Um, like I said, you know, we got a new face at QB. Um, a lot of competition is going to be going on the camp. So this season exciting right now. I just hope that these guys can live up to the hype and the pressure that us as Atlanta Falcons, the coaching staff, everybody is putting on these young guys to help us compete this year. 
So, guys, give me your thoughts on this year's rookie class. How important are they to our success in 2022? And this is your boy, Ricondo, coming back at you with another video. Peace!